Welcome to our final segment of GCSAA TV Live. Here from Syngenta to talk about bringing the best together is Stephanie Schwenke, Turf Market Manager at Syngenta, and Kimberly Gard, Syngenta Territory Manager for Southern California and Arizona. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. You bet. Stephanie, tell us about your theme this year, which is bringing the best together. What's that about? Excellent, yes, thank you. That's a wonderful starting point for us, and thank you for inviting us to be here. My pleasure. To share with everyone what is going on at GCSAA and on the trade show floor, as well as the Syngenta theme. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be most appropriate this year to create a, thing, a theme that is very close to our heart, which is the meaning of the word Syngenta, okay. which actually means bringing people together. Oh. And what a perfect way to kick off the 2022 GCSA Conference and Trade Show, then and with featuring golf course superintendents. Okay. We know the last couple years have been a challenge for all of us. Mm -hmm. We're very excited to be back together face to face, as I know many of them are as well. And we want to showcase their resilience for what we have all gone through over the last couple of years. So bringing people together and what we've captured as bringing the best together has turned into our theme this year at the trade show. Very good, very good. Uh, tell us about some of the ways Syngenta is supporting women in the turf industry. Absolutely, that's probably one of my passions as well as my colleague Kimberly here um, because we know and many of us who are in this industry and look around the room realize that we can work harder, we can work differently and we can work better with creating diversity. We need to create a different talent pool. We need to attract new, different, and younger generations sure. into our industry. And we welcome them, and we want to do that. So we've had the privilege over the last five years of collaborating with GCSA and creating what has turned into an event called Ladies Leading Turf. So each year we bring in four to five um, industry female leaders mm -hmm. to talk about their experiences and what it's like to work in this industry and hopefully capture and gain awareness to create more interest of new people coming into the industry. Okay. So we've really spearheaded that event with Ladies Leading Turf as well as the networking reception, but we've gone beyond that. And that's what I think Kimberly um, also has developed a passion with and would like to share with you okay, today. Sure. Please tell us. So in 2020, in February, Troy Flanagan, who is the golf course uh, maintenance or golf course operations um, for the Olympic Club, mm -hmm. he asked if uh, we would be interested in working to get some women for his volunteer team. He was hosting the U.S. Women's Open, and we were able to get 30 women to come and help with the setup and put that championship on. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, really helped just connect some of the women. Uh, some of them, are, like there's one individual I'm thinking of that actually is the only superintendent in the entire state. So just connecting these women together to have that network and interaction, it was a really, really wonderful experience. Do you have anything um, coming up? I see uh, you've got something, the U.S. Women's Open in 2022. Yes, it was very impactful, and there were a lot of people that were very excited to keep that momentum going. So luckily going forward, we will be um, helping uh, David Frichty, who is the Director of Agronomy at Pine Needles. So we have a women's group that will be coming in to help with the volunteer staff there, participating with the setup again, and um, just, just it's, a, it's a great event. And then going forward in... Um, 2023 uh, Pebble Beach so Bubba Wright at Pebble Beach um, would love to have a mixed group of volunteers as well for that event. That's fantastic. Let's talk about how each season is different and of course unpredictable and the ways Syngenta can help combat some seasonal diseases. Yes so on our website we have the Greencast online.com website and that's where a lot of our technical information is housed. So one of the first things that people could look at would be our agronomic programs that gives a general guideline for some of the products and rotations that they might want to utilize for different turf types whether it's on the greens, fairways, 
that's a great place to start. And then there's always going to be variability. Uh, so modifying that based on some of the other tools that are available, which would be soil moisture mapping, soil temperatures. Sure. There's also some turf models there with growing potential and then also growing degree days as well for things like utilization of our plant growth regulators. So all of those tools are housed online at our Greencast uh, online.com website. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about the ELGA awards that happened a few days ago at your booth? Yeah, I'll comment on that. Um, Environmental Leaders in Golf Awards has been something that Syngenta and GCSA have partnered with for well over 10 years. And it gives us the opportunity to really showcase and feature all the things golf course superintendents are doing in a positive aspect to promote environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. And it can be anything around water conservation to just simply communicating with the members or um, society that you live next to sure. uh, with the golf course all the positive and promotional opportunities of what golf course superintendents do to maintain the habitat and wildlife um, on their golf course. So we had the privilege of honoring them in our booth on Tuesday night and um, just spent a moment reflecting on their achievements and hopefully creating interest for other golf course superintendents to get involved and participate in these awards. What were some of the uh, things that you were looking for with the awards? I mean, you explained what the emphasis of the awards was. Like, for instance, you know, the winner, what was their, what was their uh, environmental emphasis? So there's different categories that golf course superintendents can um, participate, qualify, and um, submit an application for. Okay. Starts with a very long application process. Um, I'm thankful for the privilege to review the many um, categories and nomina nominations that fall into the awards. Um, but it can be anything from the bird population and habitat um, that many of them have on the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, it could happen to be Operation Pollinator, which is a positive um, sustainability opportunity that Syngenta promotes and supports and provides for superintendents to help the bee habitat um, continue to grow in the populations across the golf course. So many different factors, many different opportunities for them to participate and qualify in the awards. Okay. Um, but a lot of it, especially when we get to the state of California, deals with water and all the challenges they have for using water, maintaining it properly on their golf course, and meeting the criteria um, that the state of California itself regulates. Is that a challenge that you find your customers having a lot? Yeah, that's I, always I can, universal I across <laughs> my territory. Uh, covering the deserts and, uh, you know, San Diego, we got some rain in December, but uh, I know they were saying we may not get rain for the rest of the season. So yeah, whether it's the lack of it or particularly the quality of it as well, very high salt levels, which cause a lot of difficulties with growing turf grass. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, let's talk about the importance of personal health. Syngenta sponsored the 5K that happened yesterday. Tell us a little bit about your involvement with that. Absolutely. One of, um, one of the other great opportunities that we brought forth with the GCSA years ago was taking the opportunity to promote personal health and wellness in our industry. We know that many of us work long days, mm -hmm. weekends, and we forget to take time to take care of ourselves. And so we've had some personal interest um, within our own company. Syngenta is also a big advocate for health and wellness within our own organization. And we wanted to take that to another level and we wanted the industry to get involved and we wanted golf course superintendents to make sure they were taking the time to think about their own health and wellness. So we kick-started um, what has turned into the um, Health in Action 5K. We had over 200 um, participants in person participate and attend. And it was also um, the privilege and opportunity to offer it virtually for those who could not be with us okay. um, this year. So, so much excitement, lots of energy, um, good friendships taking place out on the course, 
And of course, the competitiveness always comes out um, with these superintendents when we do something like a 5K. Superintendent's competitive? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would like to say yes. one of my superintendents in Palm Desert did win. I know. <laughs> Yay. Garrett was this, this, this was the first year? No, I believe it's our fifth year. Oh, fifth year? Yeah. Um, so each year as we continue to move to a different um, area, we continue to host the 5K um, and we continue to get interest. So we continue and we look forward to supporting that. I wish you continued success on that. Kimberly, what are some of the challenges uh, that you, your customers are encountering and uh, how is Syngenta helping them? So definitely the, Obviously the water, water issues are, are very big. Um, you know, labor is very universal as well, not just to my territory, but across the country. So kind of tying back in mm -hmm. to, you know, fostering just bringing others that maybe haven't normally been within this industry because we are going to need to be pulling from all different areas. Definitely recruiting, you know, younger people to come into the industry. So whether that's, you know, reaching out in FFA, certainly Syngenta has a very strong relationship with them being a very large ag company. So, you know, utilizing maybe that avenue to bring and get people interested into the turf sciences, which perhaps they hadn't thought about. Um, certainly tapping into just bringing other people that whether it's women, you know, there's only about 2% of the superintendents are women, but yet half of the workforce is women. I didn't women. realize the, the percentage was so low. Yeah, so if half of the workforce is women, but we're only really getting about 2%, there's a, there's a big group of people that just within that one demographic, let alone others, that we okay. could be. Excellent. Well, thank you, Stephanie and Kimberly, for joining us today. Very interesting stuff. Really appreciate Great. it. Thank you for having us. Stay tuned for more from GCSAA TV Live. We'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. Nice job.